Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session about UI and web rendering. Our first speaker is Manuel Rego. He is uh, from Igalia, which is one of the leading contributors to open source rendering and UI frameworks, like, for example, Blink and WebKit. And he is the chair of the technical steering committee of Servo, which he will talk about now. Thank you. So, please clap for Manuel Rego. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you for, for inviting me to talk here about Servo. And yeah, like the title says, a uh, web rendering engine uh, for the future. First, we will, yeah, I mean, like the topics I will cover during, during the talk today, a quick introduction about myself and Igalia. Then I will explain what's Servo and what's not. The main features of Servo, the current status of things, like a high level overview, and like the long term vision for this project. And at the end, a uh, small conclusion. So myself, I'm Manuel Rego. I work at Igalia in the web platform team. I have been working more than 10 years now on web rendering engines, basically mostly on, on Blink and, and WebKit. And uh, I have been, as part of that work, being part of the CSS working group at the W3C. And since January 2023, I'm the, the chair of the TSC, the Technical Steering Committee of, of Servo. And yeah, about Igalia, I don't know if you have ever heard about this company or not, but yeah, like if you use some open source project, probably there will be some call from Igalia in some of them, <laughs> because we have, yeah, we are an open source consultancy that was founded more than 20 years ago. We are a fully remote company with more than 140 <laughs> people right now in more than 25 countries. And yeah, like we have contributions to many open source projects, like from the Linux kernel to, to uh, graphics drivers to <coughs> where, I mean, a big part of our company works on the web platform. And we have like, we are the top contributors to Chromium WebKit and Gecko. We are like in, in the top contributors also, and also of course in, in Servo recently. So yeah, we have, we are a special company in the sense that we have a flat structure and we work like a cooperative. So we are quite pretty different to, to most companies out there. But yeah, like, uh, top open source consultancy in this web platform work. So yeah, first, what's, what's Servo? Uh, I mean, the definition is going to be a bit long, but we will go part by part, and we will try to go on some topics deeper. So Servo is a web rendering engine, so this is something different than the browser. It's not a browser, it's like, I mean, the browser uses the web rendering engine to actually render the websites. So the browser is an application on top of the, of the rendering engine. I will go more in detail about this later. And Servo is written in Rust, which makes it special, because not other uh, browsers or web engines are written in Rust. And yeah, Rust, I guess you all know, is a uh, language that is focused on security and concurrency and all that. It has WebGL and WebGPU support. Which WebGL is this JavaScript API to do uh, two-dimensional, three-dimensional graphics on the web. And WebGPU is like the evolution of that API to do more advanced, modern graphics on the web. And it's adaptable to desktop and mobile. Like uh, right now, the platform servo supports are Windows, Mac, Linux. It also supports Android now. And Lady like, Open Harmony support, Jonathan Swendar is, is bringing it to, to servo. So, I mean, we are almost five platforms right now in the project. And it's em embedded, and, and it's also adaptable to embedded applications in the sense that applications can use serve as a web view to render web content. So yeah, focusing on the web rendering engine part, which is like quite special, we usually don't think a lot on this part because we use the browser, we use the actual app on top of it. So like just maybe some names you know, like Blink is the web rendering engine that Chrome use, Gecko is the one that Firefox use, and WebKit the one that Safari use. So these are things that we are using every day, everywhere, because like every time you browse a web page or open anything that has a web content, it, you are using some of these. And yeah, these are like the things that process the HTML and CSS and other resources, and at the end paint something on your screen and displays the, the website there. Like speaking very quickly what a web rendering engine does. 
And these are huge projects, like millions of lines of codes, like especially work kit and bling are like 40, 50 millions of lines of code. So a lot of, of, of code goes to these projects and they are big and they have been growing for yeah, like 20 years or more. They are like old projects also in a sense. And yeah, they have in the different companies like Google, Apple, Mozilla, they have big teams, probably more than 100 engineers. It's not like we have a number, but in each of them, probably there are like at least 100 people or more probably, especially Google and Apple that are bigger. And, and yeah, and if you count the people that are also around the browser and all that on top, probably you can get up to thousands or whatever. So like, this is not a, a small project. I mean, this is some nice uh, drawings by Lynn Clark when she was at Mozilla. She was publishing some very nice blog posts about how the web engines work. And these are like the main faces that the web rendering engine does in order to paint the, the website. Like it starts by parsing the HTML content. So it gets all the HTML content and creates a kind of the DOM tree out of it. It also has to parse the CSS and compute the style, do the styles calculations and see which node is going to be green, which one is going to have this special background or in which position this one is going to be. Then there is a phase called layout, which is quite special. In theory, it's pretty simple because in this phase, you just need to know where in the screen is going to be a, an element, in which position, and with width and height is going to have like the dimensions. But at the end, this phase is actually pretty complex and takes a lot of part of the, of the work the web rendering engine does. Then there is this painting phase where each of these elements, you, you like actually create like this information to be painted on the on the screen and then this composition and rendering which is like the last step before presenting on the screen the browser will join some things together in layers so it can be like doing performance animations and scrolling and that kind of things so if we review these phases on on servo side like there are different modules for different of, for some of these phases and like for the parsing there is html forever and, and there is this Rust CSS parser for the CSS. For the style part, is, there is a stylo. Then layout and painting has their own coding in service, it's not like a separate module. The line between painting and composition is kind of fuzzy and not really clear. So depending how you see it, web render does a little bit of painting also. But anyway, like web render is the one doing compositing. And the ones that are here in bold, Rust CSS parser, style, and web render are modules that are used by Firefox right now, these days. So they are like being used by Firefox and shared with Firefox. They were started in Servo, but now they are used also by Firefox. So all but the layout painting phase is like kind of common with Firefox. The HTML parser is also different than anyway. And I mean, talking with things that Servo shares with Firefox. Servo also shares the JavaScript engine, which is something else, not the web engine itself. Of course, they are very couple and related, but I mean, like the JavaScript engine, the one that takes care of, of the execution of JavaScript and all that, is SpiderMonkey in Servo, which is C++ code, not Rust like the rest of Servo. And yeah, it's again used by Firefox and shared by, with, with Firefox. And there is always this question if Servo could use our JavaScript engine written in Rust or, or some other JavaScript engine, there could be that possibility in the future. But at this point for the Servo project, the, the JavaScript engine is the less of the problems. It's a production-ready JavaScript engine that works, has, is maintained by, by Mozilla, its performance and all that, so it's not like the top priority. And doing the work to use a different one because the, the JavaScript engine is coupled with the layout engine and all that a little bit. It will need uh, like a uh, big effort, which is prob will probably involve uh, people for a few years and all that to, to make it done. So it's not like the top priority right now. And yeah, what's not Servo right now? It's not a web browser, I already explained it. It's only the web rendering engine. It has a very basic, a small web browser. I mean, I'm using it here, but yeah, I mean like, it's just a URL bar and all that, nothing nothing special. I'm rendering this with, with Servo, by the way. But it's the rendering engine. I mean, that's a small browser just to, for testing purpose, not, not an actual application. So it's not a production-ready web rendering engine yet. 
is still experimental, even when it's yeah, more than 10 years old now, it's still experimental and evolving a lot. And yeah, it's not an engine to browse the general web in the sense that you can use it to browse a specific control environment where you know the HTML, CSS, you are using and all that. I'm using it to render these slides that use Reveal.js, but yeah, you cannot use it for render, like going and browsing any website because there are many things that are missing. So yeah, going on the main server features, I will go over, over them and explain a bit them a bit deeper. Deeply, one important one is that it's independent project. It was started by Mozilla, like 2012. So yeah, more than 10 years ago now, Mozilla started this effort. This was started together with a Rust language. And it was like kind of, if we can make a web rendering engine with Rust, then Rust is a good language. It's good enough to do other things, like a test case for it. And they were evolving together at the beginning quite a lot. And yeah, in 2020, Mozilla decides to lay off the whole servo team. They were switching focus on priorities and that kind of things. And they lay off the whole team. And the project was transferred to, to Linux Foundation. At that point, it was mostly meaning that, yeah, we are not going to work on the project. We just kind of donated to Linux Foundation. But nothing, I mean, there was in maintenance mode for a couple of years after that. I mean, there were no active work and all that. And since January 2023, Galia took over the maintenance of the project. The project also moved to Linux Foundation Europe uh, during that year. And yeah, now it's been active since then, and we are getting more and more contributors to the project. So this is the commit chart from, from GitHub. And you can see, I mean, like between 2020, half mid-2020, when the Mozilla folks stopped working on the project, you can see a kind of low commits rate for a while because it was like I'd say basic maintenance mode, not a lot of people working on the project and all that. And since January, I mean since 2023, we have started working on it and more things are, are happening now. If we I mean these numbers are usually like not very useful because if you go into detail into the t details of how many commits or PRs you have here or there is pretty complex, but it's still I mean, the project is growing, like 2022 was very slow, but now, I mean, this only this first half of the year, we have the same numbers that already the whole last year, like number of PRs, and also the number of contributors is even bigger. So, yeah, those are good news for the project, showing that it's live and it's growing. And yeah, this about this independent part, like the main web engines are managed by big corporations like Apple, uh, Google and Mozilla, like we all know them, even others working with them like Microsoft and things like that, but still many decisions are to taken by the main ones, even when they have some kind of open model for, and it's an open source project and all that, there are still many things that the, the big corporations decide if they want something, they will probably end up adding it to the project. And the funding for all of these engines at the end, I mean, there are comes from the Google search deals, basically, and the ads that Google search has. Like, uh, Google has deals with Apple and with Mozilla to have uh, Google as the default search engine. And these deals uh, are the ones that get most of the money for Mozilla and for Apple to fund the work on, on the web engine. Of course, Apple has other ways of, of revenue and all that, but still. And this all, at the end, comes from the ads that Google gets in, in Google search. There are some yeah, talks by colleagues, um, Brian Cartel or Stephanie Stimak, about this topic, if you're interested in knowing more about how funding on the web ecosystem uh, works. And yeah, in the case of Servo, it's managed by the Technical Steering Committee at, at Linux Foundation Europe, so it's like yeah, in an open space and where we decide together what are the, the main tasks we are working on and the different people collaborating there from, from different companies. Another feature of Servo is parallel, that is parallel. And yeah, this was like a key feature for Servo from the beginning of the project together with, with Rust. I mean, using Rust was a way to, to have an, an easy way to do parallelism in the project. And yeah, it's using it as much as possible or almost everywhere. Servo has a parallel layout engine. No other uh, web engine have, have something like this. And despite this is pretty complex because 
initial layout engine in Servo that was started with the project uh, was using Parallels all the time <laughs> to render everything or trying to use Parallels all the time. And that was showing it was not possible to implement CSS, things like CSS floats was not possible with that layout engine to, to implement them properly. There were always corner cases and things like that. And in 2020, there was a, an effort to rewrite the layout engine. I mean, following new things like other engines are doing, maybe this is like too technical for people not following these things, but in Chromium, they were doing layout ng at the time and things like that. So like this new layout engine is also kind of following those approaches, trying to follow closer the specs and all that. And yeah, it has been evolving since 2020, but there was this layoff, so it was stopped for a while. Now we are retaking the work on it, and it's using parallels as much as possible, but when there are things like floats or things like that, it stops and cannot do, use it, but still it can show performance improvements. And yeah, like using parallels makes you potentially faster and more energy efficient in, in the devices that you have these days that have usually multiple cores in the CPU, GPU, and, and all that. So you can take advantage of those. The other thing about Servo is that there hasn't been recently performance work. Like you see, there was these years of not a lot of work on the project, and then like last year of the project reactivation and all that, but we didn't have the time to, to do performance optimizations or things like that yet. And of, also there is this part of doing a proper benchmarking comparisons with Chromium and all that, that hasn't been done yet. Despite of that, the initial results are, are kind of promising when we have tested some things. This is a video of Servo running in parallel with Chromium in a Linux desktop, nothing, nothing special, nothing optimized, just... And some examples run a little bit faster on, on Servo than Chromium. Of course, these examples are thought to showcase Servo benefits, they are not like uh, real websites or anything like that. They have a lot of elements and Servo can parallelize them and make things faster. And yeah, and Jonathan was also doing some, some tests on Open Harmony comparing with Chromium and showing that the, the layout was actually way faster in Servo as soon as you use more than one CPU. So that's, I mean, probably hopeful and potentially can be a good, a good thing for the, for the project in the future. Yeah, another feature of service that is embeddable and that's like in a, like can be seen from two meanings. Like one is that it can provide a web view for other applications. So they can, if you need to render web content, instead of using like the system web view or Chromium or whatever, you can just use, use Servo and, and go with it. The API for, for that is still evolving. We have been working with Tauri, which is a, a Rust UI framework that wants to, that use the system with view, but wants to use Servo because they, that's also Rust and all that. And yeah, the API is still evolving and adding more features and things like that. But, but yeah, some use cases could be these kind of UI frameworks or other small apps that need just a uh, control environment of HTML and CSS and they can use Servo. And also the other point, to, I mean, the other way we can see to this embeddable feature is that it can be used in embedded devices in the sense of devices that have, uh, uh, I mean, like not very powerful CPUs, things like that, like the Raspberry Pi, things like that. We have uh, managed to run Servo there and, and with good, good results. So this is the example of Tauri using Servo underneath. This is like you know, showing how it works in the three platforms, Windows, Mac and, and Linux. And yeah, basically this is like the collaboration we did with, with Tauri around, around this just so far showing some content, but yeah, we have been working on adding also multiple web views, things like that, that will allow to do nicer things. And yeah, Servo is also memory safe, and that's, of course, thank you to the Rust language that allows you to have fewer vulnerabilities in your code related to memory and concurrency, and the language was thought for that specifically, and yeah, this is an advantage of Servo compared with the other engines that all of them use. Uh, C++, which of course has uh, this kind of memory problems. And Servo is also modular, uh, which means that, yeah, I mean, in the Rust ecosystem, the modules are called crates, 
and Servo has many different grades that it has created during the years. And yeah, some of them are very popular in the, in the Rust ecosystem and many Rust applications end up depending on them. And even yeah, like we were speaking, explaining before, Firefox use some of these servo modules now. I mean, who is the upstream is not totally clear. I mean, there is a good collaboration with Mozilla. Mozilla is doing changes and we get them downstream, but we also upstreaming changes from servo to these projects, but still. And the main ones is our stylo and, and web render. Okay, about the current status of, of the servo project. Um, yeah, I don't know if you know about the WPT test suite, this web platform test suite that the different browser engines use to check how, yeah, the, I mean, like when you do a change in a browser engine, you need to run this, I don't know, 40,000 tests? I don't know how many they are, like a lot of tests. <laughs> that are basically HTML with some JavaScript, CSS, to check how things are, are looking. And for Servo, you go to this website, wpt.servo.org, you can check the pass rates for the different folders and that kind of things. In this particular case, I'm focusing on the CSS folder to see that, yeah, like at the beginning uh, of, I mean, like a year and a half ago or a bit less a year ago, we were around passing 40% of the CSS whole test suite. And now we are getting close to 70%. Of course, I mean, there are many things still missing and getting to 100% uh, is probably impossible, not even Chromium or whatever past 100%, but still, yeah, I mean, like growing at the end when you implement new features, some features are going to be very big, like Flexbox or Real Layout, and will probably take a while until you can go a bit up, but still there are a lot of room to, of things to do, but we are progressing properly and the new layout engine is paving the way to add more features and show that it can adapt to, to different things. This is not yeah, very relevant again, but well known. So the acid tests are now passing in Chromium, both the, the one and the two. If we see the status like yeah, a year ago was like, or a year and a half ago was like very bad for them. And yeah, like now Servo can render like, this is a Wikipedia article I'm rendering here. There are some issues here and there, but still, yeah, like the main thing, you can you can see it. And yeah, like like I say, I'm also able to render this, these slides. So if you think on the long-term vision of the project, if you go to the server website, this is the first sentence, which are like the features we were talking about, the embeddable, independent, memory-safe, modular, parallel web rendering engine. They are still like the long-term vision of the project. But if we go a little bit more in details of thing, other things we would like to do, or good things we would like to do in the project, one, of course, is HTML and CSS support. Like the servo layout engine still lacks several features. I was mentioning Flexbox. Table support is coming, but it still like, lacks some features. Grid layout is not there, and many, many other features in CSS, but also in HTML. This requires a lot of, of work. To make it work compatible, like if you want to browse the general web, this is a just long effort because you need to fix a lot of things and improve a lot of things in many different areas, and the web is platform is very big. On performance, yeah, like I was mentioning, Servo hasn't been optimized in most cases. Only the modules that are used by Firefox and were optimized. This style long web render when Firefox started to adopt them, they had like performance improvements thanks to using them. And there is still a lot of work in other parts of Servo uh, to improve performance and with room for, for optimizations. For example, Servo is missing this incremental layout feature that all the other engines have. When you do changes on a website, that will be way slower in Servo until we implement that. Yeah, on binary size and memory footprint, Servo is expected to be a lightweight and modular web engine. So there are still, again, work to do here. There hasn't been, again, recent work on this area. But yeah, we could do work to reduce the binary size, to fine tune the memory usage, so we don't use a lot of memory in some situations, and also to allow customization, so you can disable parts of server you don't care, and you can get a smaller uh, binary thanks to that. Accessibility is a, a big thing that server is missing. Servo currently has no accessibility support at all, and yeah, we know it's very important for every project, and especially for a uh, web, web rendering engine that other applications are going to rely on. And the yeah, accessibility in other engines have some performance 
issues, like when you enable it, usually the, the experience is a bit slower and all that. The goal with Servo will be to have accessibility support without any of these performance issues, trying to use Paralins again, as in the rest of the project, as much as possible for the accessibility tree, and yeah, uh, hopefully enabling this. But this has to be, to be designed and yeah, creating a new architecture from, from scratch. And yeah, a couple of other things that are related with the first point, like if you think in popular frameworks to develop applications these days, like React or Vue or others, uh, server are not, not support them yet. And we will need to implement like different web platform specifications to, to support them. This is like complementing the work on HTML and CSS. There are more things, uh, more specifications out of, of those that we'll need to work on in order to support some of these frameworks. And very similar to the previous point, if we want to render popular websites that not right now are broken on Servo, we will need to add more missing features. Like if you want to do calls or whatever, you will need WebRTC, which is missing and things like that. So again, complementing the, the previous points, this will be like working on adding more and more, more features. So yeah, just to, to close this, this talk today. Yeah, the server rendering engine has a few strong points, like it's independent, the open governance at the Linux Foundation Europe. It's performant, is the only one doing like parallelization of a component, web content on the full stack. And it's secure, thank you to the Rust language. But it also has some not so good things. It's still experimental, even after 12 years. <laughs> and it's still missing the many, many features, so it cannot be used on a daily basis. So yeah, I was saying a web engine for the future and uh, how we can get there. Like we will need to grow a healthy ecosystem around the project. We are in that way, in that path. I mean, more and more people are working on the project these days. That's positive. And yeah, we will need multiple organizations joining efforts who are working on the project, putting people to work on the project and also funding the project uh, with funds from the public or private sector, like with grants or with some companies like deciding to bet for the project and, and putting money on it. And in the project also has like a lot of opportunities. I mean, from starting with simple applications that need to render web content, if you know the environment I like was mentioning and you control it, you can and you just need some specific features, then you can probably use servo for your application and you don't need like Chromium or something bigger. Also allowing these UI frameworks to use Servo. The UI framework usually has some components, some buttons, some, some text areas, whatever. And if they implement them with features that are supported by Servo, you can, or, or we add support in Servo for those features, then we, you can use Servo to render them. Ideally, it should become the default web engine in the Rust ecosystem. Like if you have a Rust application and you want to render content, probably Servo should be the default thing. And eventually, it should grow to support like a full feature web browser. But yeah, that will be like uh, looking years ahead. But of course, it also has a challenge. I mean, like it has huge competitors like Chromium, uh, WebKit, Gecko. They are like big things. And also, the web platform is always evolving. That's very positive for the web developers. They can always get new features and all that. But when you are on the other side implementing features, you are always catching up with new things uh, and all that. We don't have in the project, I mean, the different people working is not a big enough team to do all this so far, and we lack funding. But yeah, hopefully, we can, we can walk this path and get there and grow this more and, and improve the situation. So. Yeah, if you are interested on the project, you can, I mean, on the GitHub, the, all the code is there. You can check things. There is a chat if you want to discuss things about the project where all the contributors are discussing things. You can email us if you yeah, are interested or you can sponsor on GitHub or Open Collective. And yeah, we are looking to grow the community around the server project and make it yeah, a big success in the, in the future. And yeah, that's all. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for the great talk. Do you have any questions from the audience already? Yeah, I do. Yeah, let's wait for the microphone. Uh, I was wondering, wondering if Servo has uh, any integration with the WebAssembly. 
like WebAssembly integration is usually on the uh, JavaScript engine level. So yeah, you can run WebAssembly on Servo because SpiderMonkey already supports WebAssembly. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, is there any special reason that uh, uh, Servo chooses this uh, Spider Monkey, a uh, Monker JavaScript engine uh, for it? Why not use the uh, V8 from Chrome, you know, project? So, I mean, like initially it was Mozilla developing the project, and they were, I mean, they have to use a JavaScript engine. They they have one already, so <laughs> why using something else? I guess so. They just go with Spider Monkey, like I mentioned. A spider monkey is being used by Firefox, and other companies also use it for other things. So it's good enough for the project. The project has many other things that are missing thing, features, and the, not in JavaScript side, thank you to spider monkey. Like we have WebAssembly, thank you to spider monkey. And yeah, like why not use something else? It could use something else at some point. The other question is why use something else? <laughs> like the opposite. Why, why do we want to use V8 if a spider monkey is good enough for the project needs? I mean, because it's going to be faster, we don't really know, because maybe at the end when you integrate with Servo, I mean, the integration between the JavaScript engine and the web engine is a bit complicated because of the all how you manage memory, garbage collection and all that, all the different DOM elements and the DOM nodes. So, I mean, it's like the people, the person, Josh Matthews, that was doing this integration says that if you want to replace the JavaScript engine, it's going to be a big effort and you don't know if you're going to get a lot of benefits. So it's not something that nothing has, nobody has tried so far, but yeah, at some point it could yeah. ideally use even a Rust web JavaScript engine. There is one that is called BOA, but it's not, still not feature complete, but yeah, I mean, like ideally it should be a full Rust stack. Yeah, and another question is about, you mentioned your panel layout engine is very you know good feature in a server project. So I also mentioned this actually is quite complex. Right? I'm, I'm just wondering what kind of approach like you use to ensure the correctness or how to find the debug concurrency in this project. Yeah. I mean, it's a little bit related to the topic in this morning. Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I mean, for the layout engine, like how do you check that things are working fine or not? You check it with the WPT test I was showing. So that's like to check correctness on the implementation. Like the basis for that is like the web perform tests that all the browsers use. Then yeah, like how you check other things like concurrency or not, how fast you are with that. Yeah, that's something different. There are, you know, I mean, there are no, we are not running benchmarks there or anything like that, but yeah, ideally we should have some benchmarks and running them like which is release and things like that, so we can check how things are evolving and not with, with Servo. The other engines have these bots that are running performance tests, like for every nightly build or every build, and they run these performance tests and they catch regressions and check that things are going fine and all that. At the, at the, in the long run, we should have the same in Servo, yeah. Thank you. I also have a question. So since the architecture of Servo is changing now a bit, if you had the opportunity to go back 10 years into the past and make different decisions, what would you do differently? I mean, I, I was not there <laughs> in the Servo <laughs> project when they started 10 years ago. I guess one, one thing that they, they could have done different, but of course they need to experiment with the other was this layout engine because they were working on one for like 10 years or something like that. And... And at the end, they realized that it was not good enough, the design of, of it, and they have to switch. But at the same time, that also comes with, I mean, that Google was doing the same with, with Blink, like switching the layout engine. And, and even Apple is doing, I mean, on a slower, lower scale, because they are just having one, two people working on that. They also have a new layout engine in web that is called layout formatting context which is still like, yeah, I think it's only enabled for inline layout so far, but, and it's still early stages, but it's still like, all the engines are realizing that it's better to follow the specs closer. So now the new implementations are trying to follow what the spec says and trying to implement that. Because if you have bugs, then maybe you have to report the issue to the spec, but it's easier to understand the whole thing and it's, yeah, it fits, I mean, like the CSS specs are pretty complex at the end if you join everything together. So if you follow them, it's kind of simpler to implement. So I guess that's 
the part where if they will have started with this new approach, but yeah, of course, you need like the previous. Then probably we will have a way better support of HTML and CSS at this point. Because the old engine still has a better support in, in some examples. Because they were doing more features there. Thanks. Any uh, other questions uh, yeah, from the audience? Question. Yeah. Actually, I have Last two questions. Um, <laughs> only one. Uh, only one? No, we Let, already... Let's try, but it's getting... We still have time. Right? So uh, I attended uh, lots of NL uh, in last month, I remember. So I found there's a lot of European uh, developers or community guys trying to use in Rust to rebuild a lot of different kinds of software right, regarding every aspect. So I'm just wondering from uh, um, besides security part, uh, from performance uh, side, is there any kind of statistics or kind of um, um, observations that the Rust implementation of the software can be better than the original one implemented by C or C++? I mean, Rust, uh, the language itself has concurrency support. So, I mean, you can do concurrent programs by default without doing anything special with Rust. So, just the language is designed to be used in, in concurrently and, and all that, and has some things that allows you to avoid race conditions and things like that. So, you don't need to take care. So, that makes it simpler to use parallels than in other languages. So, I guess that's, I mean, the performance, of course, of C++ is very good, but in Rust, it's also a system-level programming language, so it will be kind of close, but at the same time, you can use parallels way easier. You can do parallels and concurrency in C++, but then you enter in a, yeah, a bunch of issues and all that. But, yeah. I see. So it's more like a, a easier for developers to write concurrent program in using Rust, right? Yeah, the okay. language is designed for, for that. Okay, and another question is about your strategy. I mean, as you mentioned, the web uh, rendering engine or the web browser is too complicated. Even like a Chromium cannot be 100% to say he, he, he can fulfill all functionality of like CSS. So, uh, but I mean, um, what's your strategy of fulfill the gap between the functionalities and uh, uh, the all of the things compared to Chromium. I mean, yeah. for example, which one would you kind to implement first and which one you are maybe, yeah. Yeah, so like I mentioned, we, start, we took over the project in January. We were studying both layout engines to decide what we do because the old one has more features than the new one at that point, especially, but we decided to go with the new one. So. First was, we are going to implement CSS floats. That was impossible with the old one. If we prove it's possible, then that's like a big achievement. <laughs> and we managed to do that. So that's why we started with floats, basically. Now we are working on table support, which is a kind of popular also. But, and we plan to work on Flexbox in the coming months. Because Flexbox is used by, I mean, like 80% of, of the websites or whatever. So many websites use Flexbox, and it's a big thing we are missing. About how to decide priorities, that's pretty tricky, and you can do it like, yeah, on one side, like percentage of usage of different features, and you prefer to, like, the top ones, you prefer to focus on them. The other side is, I want to render these uh, applications properly on Servo, maybe, I don't know, uh, whatever, uh, YouTube or Spotify or whatever application you want to run, which features I'm missing, and then you focus on implementing those, like, I want to run this properly, I need to fix this, these things here, and then you, you select the priorities from that. So there are these kind of two different ways to, to approach that. Okay, thank you. Okay. Then let's thank the speaker once more.